The following transmission is between myself and Eleonora, one of the most well-known and celebrated modders in both the Elder Scrolls and Fallout community. Having made incredibly high-quality home and clothing mods for both Skyrim and Fallout 4. Having been modding for well over a decade at this point, Eleonora has created some of the most well-known and celebrated mods ever to come out of the Nexus mod website, including Eli's Armor Compendium, Bree's Home, and Faction Housing Overall. During our conversation, we talk about a wide variety of topics, such as Eleonora's extensive modding history, mod censorship and thematics, as well as the work she has done for both Bethesda's Creation Club as well as her most recent work for Starfield. This is the Atom Cast, and the best way you can show your support is by subscribing to our Patreon, as your monthly contributions will go towards improving the quality of transmission, as well as helping to decrease the time between uploads. As always, links to our Patreon, as well as guest socials, will be linked in the description below. Without further ado, Modding superstar, Eleonora. All right, so you have done a lot of, you've done a lot of mod work over the uh, over the years. Um, we actually just talked about this like right before uh, we started the uh, the interview. Um, you've done a lot of mod work over the years. You've done Skyrim. You've done Fallout. Now that um, now that Starfield is out, uh, I believe you've put out a couple of things for Starfield. Um, out of like all of them, I guess more so like Fallout and Skyrim, uh, because like those are the games that you've modded for the most, as far as I've seen anyway. Um, out of all of that work, though, um, what are you most well? How do you how do you how do you feel as if? you represent yourself like you are Ele Eleonora the blank modder is it Skyrim is it Fallout um or rather Fallout 4 um and why is that how you choose to present yourself when in actuality you are Eleonora the Fallout 3 modder <laughs> <laughs> yeah I, I I've made tons of Fallout 3 mods for sure um I like to say I'm a Bethesda modder Especially now with Starfield out, I've done uh, mods for four of their games. And once the official uh, Starfield modding tools hit, or we get the X Edit tool, and I can actually make ESPs, or uh, I will probably be making Starfield stuff as well. And um, so, a bit the modder. Do you think that, um, or rather, not do you think, um, but rather. Uh, was there, I, I don't know, it's just like floating around in my brain. I saw this Polygon article, uh, talking about you and how like, oh, like Bethesda Modder, uh, comes in and gets hired to do like stuff for Starfield. But like, I don't, mm -hmm. I don't, I don't even know if I have the article anymore. It was like a Polygon article and it was like the, <laughs> it was like <laughs> inventor of the Skyrim cheese house gets <laughs> gets hired to do work for starfield or something like that so like what it what is the cheese house because like that article was literally the first time i've ever heard of that and i've seen a whole bunch of your your skyrim mods and like i've downloaded a whole bunch of your fallout mods like what's the cheese house what's the story with that um so <clears throat> if you played um uh, morrowind and uh, i'm not morrowind oblivion and skyrim there is a character called shea Gorath who likes cheese cheese for everyone and I, I have made a lot of houses, but I haven't made a house out of cheese. So I made a house for Shea Goras. It's a kind of small house, though, and it's made of cheese. And it was released as an April Fool's joke. I, I like making April Fool's mods. Um, I have a house armor, which is a armor for Fallout 4 made uh, entirely out of house bits. Like there's a roof, there's a TV in your back, there's a house plant, coffee mug, that sort of thing. So I said, I'm going to make one for Skyrim as well. Oh it's yeah, not horse armor. It's cheese house. Cheese house armor or cheese house? And it is cheese house. It's that... it's a tiny little house made of cheese wheels, and and I changed some of the textures to be like yellow. 
that's got to be the uh, that's got to be the next natural evolution. You go from cheese house to house armor to cheese house armor in Starfield. <laughs> oh no, we'll have to do it. There is cheese. There right. is cheese. In there Starfield, is. So there's... maybe we can we can wiggle that in. There's very well uh, well textured cheese too. Yeah, it's true. I yeah. need to. Well, but but it's all packaged. You can't see it in all its glory. So. Oh yeah, that's maybe... right. Maybe we need a cheese mod for Starfield where we have cheesy meals. There's grilled cheese. Yeah, so. yeah, there is grilled cheese armor house house armor. What one of the there two? There we go. Yeah. <laughs> coming coming April first, twenty twenty four. Hell yeah! Like, you heard right, it here first. Yeah. <laughs> Be on the lookout for whatever it was I just said because it's coming. <laughs> <laughs> um, on that though, like so. I mean, I, I, I do a little introduction at the beginning of these videos, like before the actual interview, introducing like who you are, the kind of mods you do, stuff like that, um, or the kind of work that you do in our little Bethesda sphere. But um, yeah. why don't why don't we hear it, uh, you know, directly from the source? What is sort of like your like the overarching story of your like you know your modding history? Like where did you start? Where did things pick up? And like where are you now? So I pre-ordered Skyrim 2011 and I went in not knowing what the game was about, fell in love, uh, I started using mods a couple of months after the game was out, maybe, it, it was sooner. I registered in Nexus Mods in uh, November 2011 and it has all been downhill from there. Um, I downloaded someone else's mod and I was like, it doesn't have enough mannequins, uh, I want to add more. Mm -hmm. So I tried to add more but i was like why am i editing someone else's house i have the tools now i have the power unlimited power and <laughs> i made my own i wasn't happy with it so i tried again and again and 150 houses later people knew who i was <laughs> yeah what was the um so like you said it was just like a house that you just added more mannequins to yeah it was called the creeks it was um it was like a white run architecture little little cottage in a beautiful location it's an incredible location but it just didn't have enough clutter and that but that, that's how i started yeah with just the uh which is the was it just the mannequins or did you just because like you're probably more so known i mean i guess it would kind of be debatable whether you're more more so known for your clutter work you know, because you add mm -hmm. you add a lot of like housing mods, uh, and just like mods in general that just like add a lot more clutter and like a more lived in feel to different yeah. locations. Um, but you're also tremendously well known for uh, your clothing, you know, crafting uh, and yeah. and and such. So like it when you when you started with that mod, um, was it was it literally just that like there just wasn't enough stuff inside the house and you felt like you needed more clutter it, it kind of was like i was like this looks beautiful but it could be nicer i didn't go in planning to start making houses it just sort of pulled me into it mm -hmm. i i enjoyed doing that so much and it's extremely important for me in video games to live in a nice place and to have a place to store all my loot and it it actually it's like the most important thing for me in games uh, so <clears throat> I, d I just want to do it myself and if I have the tools and the opportunity I want to arrange things in a way that it, it helps my gameplay Starfield. but sometimes it gets too inspiring and, and I do things that I wouldn't even use myself yeah like you just put stuff in for the sake of it like being there yeah, I mean, I see something in real life and I'm like, that looks like a cool house or that looks like a cool ar armor. Sometimes I start a playthrough and I'm like, okay, this character needs its own style house. So I just make that because I know what the character is going to do. And I know what the needs are going to be. I get bored with houses really quickly. Like, so quickly. It, it It's like doubly so in Bethesda because even though in like vanilla Bethesda games, there are certain uh, like houses and locations that like, they, they they like they're very well made but at time especially like the older games because like starfield doesn't starfield and like a little bit fallout 4 don't really have that issue um but in like older games uh like you play fallout new vegas well kind of like i don't know i 
I'm going to, I'm going to add Fallout New Vegas because like Obsidian yeah. made it, but you know, Bethesda contracted them and mm-hmm. stuff like that. Uh, Fallout New Vegas, Fallout 3, uh, uh, Skyrim, um, like their, their, their locations and their architecture and stuff like that are very well made and their interiors are very mm-hmm. well made, but they always seem to be like a little bit empty, you know? Yep. Yeah. But like, especially, especially Starfield. I'm like, no, it's not pre-built. Yeah. Oh yeah. Like when you put down, uh, when you're like building an outpost and then you just have all those like empty rooms in there and it's all like, no, there's not enough yeah, I things. Still, I still haven't decided whether I want to live in my spaceship or if I want a home somewhere. The spaceships I'm are pretty nice. Oh uh, yeah. Aquila city is pretty nice. I haven't, I haven't gotten to the point where I'm able to actually like buy a house yet. Um, but mm. I have, I have been, I've been like dabbling a little bit with like the outpost system and like building like some things and it's really weird because sort of like the i don't know maybe if it's maybe it's just like either the aesthetic of starfield or just like the feeling of being on like an empty planet but like it's a very different feeling having like a minimalist space room in starfield you know like you Mm. put down the the prefab room and then you put in like you know a chair there's a there's a bed over there there's a workbench uh off to the side and then like another room like that's where you're eventually this is more so my experience like i got a, i got a yeah. uh like the glass prefab room it's like this is where like all the like plants and stuff are gonna go when i have like enough fiber and stuff to actually make plants um <laughs> yeah. but like there's just something about to me anyway there's something about the uh the empty aesthetic of that like kind of kind of like liminal space in a sense you yeah. know it's like stuff is supposed to be here it's not but then like you kind of zoom out a little bit and it's like you're on a barren planet and it's like the same mm-hmm. thing still applies like stuff is supposed to be here but it's not and then you get that weird feeling you know yeah yeah i i don't have any outposts yet because i've been just buying and picking up ingredients and like uh, what are they called resources Mm -hmm. so i can see that being a big thing for some people Mm -hmm. people who loved building in fallout 4 for example and it's gonna blow up once mods come out for it me personally i i don't think i've done outpost stuff very much outside vanilla playthroughs i don't you do that much in fallout at all in, it, you mean in Starfield? Uh, e- either. Oh, okay, like, gotcha. Four, I gotcha. don't use the settlement system that much. I have really? a settlement. I put down the basic needs, but I don't actually use that all that much. I tried playing Sim Settlements, and I just didn't care about the settlements. Mm-hmm. It, it's it's weird. But at the same time, I have to have a really perfect house, and I, I just love questing, and I don't... I haven't gone into it. But I can see that being a huge thing for people who who are into that. People build the most amazing things. I don't know where they find the patience for it. But I just want to quest and collect things and sell things and have a beautiful home, which I didn't need to build in the game editor. That's really interesting uh, that that's your, uh, that's your take on that when it comes to like the settlement building stuff. Because it kind of, to me anyway, it kind of seems like uh you adding like all that detail and clutter to like houses and stuff like that it's kind of like a micro version of uh mm-hmm. like settlement building um because especially with like sim settlements um it's you know it's just much easier to build a settlement because it's like okay plop down a thing here plop down a thing there they're gonna build those and then like it's kind of gonna go off from there um unless you do what i do and you're like lazy and uncreative and you just pick somebody else's <laughs> like pre-built plan and just have it build that um which to your point yeah like it makes it so much easier and like as you said uh some of like the blueprints and stuff are just like crazy good looking like they're phenomenal yeah there's there's so good at building there's a um uh there's a guy uh in my in my discord server uh he's oh gosh let me let me let me find him real quick his name i i always get him for some reason my brain just like gets him confused with somebody there he is uh oh and of course the 
hold on. Oh, wait, no, there it is. Nope, that's that's also not it. Uh, mm-hmm. <laughs> oh, God damn it. I don't know what it is, but, like, recently, uh, whenever I do, I'll just do this. Hold on. There it is. Uh, Carvok. Um, he's, yeah. uh, he's got some stuff on the, uh, on the Nexus as well, but he has, uh, he's built a whole bunch of different, uh, settlement stuff and he's like won yeah. a couple of the like seasonal things. Uh, and they're always like really, really good looking. And I, I don't know how he has the, uh, he showed me like once in a, uh, in, in like a private stream, how he like puts everything together and like how yeah. he moves like the little tiny pieces of like wall and, uh and different items around and stuff like that, like moves it a very small amount so that he can actually like get specific things in where he wants it. And I, I just yeah. don't have any idea how he has like the time or the creative mindset to like do stuff like that. But did he do that in, in, in the game editor or in creation kit? Uh, he did it in, uh, I believe he did it in the game editor. What? See, yeah. that's my problem. I've been thinking about this, uh, why I don't care about building in mm-hmm. these games, because uh, clearly it's something that people are absolutely crazy about. Mm-hmm. Um, it's the creation kit. It's the modding tools. They right. are so much more versatile. They have You have so much more freedom. You don't have to use janky controls in games. Um, you can place it exactly where you want it. It's not going to be like, oh, I don't know how to put this thing on a shelf because mm-hmm. I don't know where the collision is. Have you tried putting stuff on shelves in Skyrim, uh, Fallout, or Starfield? It's, like, it's, manually. You it, pick it up yeah. and you try to slide it in. It's it's impossible. And yeah. in Starfield, it lets you pick up uh, like miscellaneous objects. But when you try to place it on a shelf, it's like, okay, I don't know if I should put this to the top shelf or the bottom shelf, or am I just going to leave it floating in the middle of the shelf? I don't know what to do. I I can't stand that. It's so cumbersome. It's it's infuriating. I don't know if and... it was like in like a playthrough uh, or in like a stream or something, but like I'm, you know, you know, like where your room is in the Constellation Lodge, right? Yeah. It's like the, you, there's like the bar, and then you go down that long hallway. Um, in yeah. that in that hallway, there's a shelf that has like a couple things on it. One of them is like a, a cow skull or something. And I like yeah. knocked that over. And I'm like, oh no, I knocked it over. So I gotta like put it back on the shelf and stuff. And I'm like messing with it for like like two minutes. I'm like, okay, how to like pick it up and like what? Why don't you go yeah. back? Go back on what? Go, come on! <laughs> mm-hmm. I did was... the same thing. There was a basket and there was like an alien skull, and I couldn't get them back on the shelf. Mm-hmm. And... You, it's the same thing when you're trying to make your house in the game, and it's. I feel like it's a little bit worse in Starfield actually mm-hmm. when you're trying to manually place outside the build mode. When you're in a settlement, uh, the outpost build mode, you can pick up um, items and you can place them on surfaces pretty well, mm-hmm. shelves notwithstanding. But then you load back in after a few weeks of adventuring in space, and they are all sunken into skin surfaces. Weird. Like, what the fuck? It's oh, so annoying. So yeah. I don't want to do that. I yeah. I don't. They get locked in place, but then they're locked in the middle of the shelf. Yeah. Uh, no. So that's why I don't like building in games, because the creation kit gives me so much freedom. I can rotate things. I can scale them. Oh, I want to make this succulent and this succulent different size mm-hmm. so that they look nicer next to each other. I right. can do that. I can't do that in game. If I can do that in game, for example, in Fallout, where there's build mode mods that let you manipulate items better, and there's place everywhere, mm-hmm. which I'm gonna need for Starfield as soon as possible. <laughs> um, so uh, I I can't do that in the game, and it's just infuriating. Creation Kit ruined gaming for me. Right. You you went from. Uh... I can't. I can't think of like a good uh, a good example from like my personal uh, perspective. But it's it's that thing. You go from like you you got spoiled on like the better thing, so you can't like right. downgrade. You know, it's kind of like going from because uh, because we had a little bit of an interaction over Twitter uh, when you put out um, your. Uh, uh, your Fallout 3 mod where you were talking about where you made like you you basically just like made a slightly better room for your house in Megaton and I asked you yeah. like hey is it easier uh, modding for Fallout 3 than it is for Fallout 4 because in my mind mm-hmm. my my plebeian I barely know how video games work brain mm-hmm. um, I'm like okay so there's less like stuff you have to worry about in Fallout 3 
Uh, you don't have to worry about like advanced lighting. The physics probably aren't as uh, as like up to snuff. Maybe I don't yeah. know. But like my brain was thinking like, oh, it's an older game, so it must be a little easier to you know to like work and stuff. <laughs> and so I asked you that, and you're like, oh God, no, it's awful. Yeah. <laughs> like it's yeah, like it's... that. You go from like yeah. you 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 worked on like the better stuff with four, and then you tried to do something for three, and it's like this is just so much worse. It's like a dumber big brother of, of Fallout 4 editor. It's it's more bare bones. Oh, sorry. Nope. <laughs> My partner just went into voice chat with, with his game friends. Oh, I'm wondering if it, this thing is going to filter it out. Uh, I heard, I could hear him a little bit. It's probably a problem when we speak at the same time. He shouldn't come through when um, when I'm when I'm not talking and he is. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's like Fallout 3 is... Um, it doesn't have advanced lighting, which infuriates me. Mm. I, it, I didn't know how the how things worked in there. It's basically the same program, but I couldn't find things that I'm used to finding. They have features and stuff like that. So it was a little bit different. Interesting. And right. it's very unstable. It's so unstable. Like it keeps crashing. You just move an object, and it's like, well, I guess I'll die and shut <laughs> myself down. It just blue screens the whole thing. It's so weird. <laughs> like, you just literally move the book, and it crashes That's because weird. it it threw a weird exception or whatever. Well, and even with like the community has made make like these utility add-ons for it that mm -hmm. make it more stable, but still, it's it's not it's usable, but it's not fun. Well, it wouldn't be a Bethesda game if there wasn't a little bit of jank. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, so let's take a step back a little bit. Uh, obviously, you got um, you you sort of like got into uh, like bigger in the modding sphere because you were doing like all your uh, all your clutter work and your housework and stuff like that. Where did that sort of translate? Because one of the other because like you're you know you're tremendously well known for your like housing and cluttering and stuff like that. Um, where did it, where did like the clothing stuff come, come in? Because you are also incredibly well known for making like a lot of very detailed, very high quality, um, uh, like outfit and clothing mods. Um, in my personal experience, primarily for Fallout 4, maybe you mm -hmm. have some, uh, some like really good stuff for like Skyrim. Um, I just don't know about it. Um, but in, in either, in either case, like how did you go from like, doing house stuff and clutter stuff to um to to clothing stuff and not just clothing stuff but like really good clothing stuff how what was the what was the transition there um uh i had old news who programs uh, outfit studio and body slide uh, and he's responsible for cbb now with caliente mm -hmm. uh, and he was on my server in discord and he started doing stuff for i was watching him like uh, decode uh, fallout 4 mm -hmm. when he came out and he, the outfit studio is just so much so much fun it's so easy you can just like mash up vanilla things and while i like the vanilla things i think they could there's so much potential in them so i started mashing them up and in fallout 4 it's so uh, important for me to look good. Ah, oh, sorry. I didn't think he would come and talk talk behind me. So it's uh, uh, my mind is blanking when I'm like here, and I'm like, oh my god, now I can hear him behind me, and now he's gonna be on the recording, and so it's like uh, he, he, I I yeah. actually I actually couldn't hear him at all. Okay, good. Because yeah. he starts talking, I'm like, okay, now he's talking over me, and he's gonna go <laughs> into the recording. So, what what do I say now? So yeah, yeah. for Fallout Fallout Four, it's just it's so uh, easy to make them with the, the the community tools. I don't need to know 3D modeling. Mm -hmm. I don't want to know 3D modeling. It, it applies right over my head. So with um with Outfit Studio and uh, Nipscope, I was just able to do so many things and it's not as fun for skyrim because skyrim is so um the meshes are like so low resolution hmm. they're, they're all they're lumpy and and they're there's not much to cut off like it there is in fallout 4 mm -hmm. 
plus there isn't as many things in Skyrim either. I think there's more freedom for Fallout 4 because like um there's so many different styles you can do. In Skyrim it's just it's just warrior armors and robes. For for Fallout you can do space suits and you can you can do all these buckles and you've got you can attach all these things hanging from them and you got all these belts and uh, different armor pieces and it, there's just so much more stuff uh in fallout 4 that can be merged into believable armors in the game and you can apparently make very warm looking and very cozy looking plaid i had i i asked my community like mm-hmm. hey what should i what should i ask eleonora and one of them was like how does she make plaid look so damn comfortable <laughs> <laughs> And, and, and so, so I got into editing editing textures. So that's an uh, an easy way to make new new looking stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, I promised people that I would update um, Armor Compendium in September. We have one day left, uh, about five and a half hours of September left. But I didn't think Starfield would pull me away as much as it did. Yeah. yeah. Um, so that was that was. I'm still going to update it like within within a few days. Oh I no! To yeah. Jump in. And, Fix. I need to fix some armors. I did a lot of work on it on stream, and then I lost the updated files because oh. Vortex was like, "Oh, you did, did what's the word? You don't need this anymore." Bloop. It's you. Vortex was like, "Oh, you downloaded Armor Compendium from Nexus. Let me just refresh that for you." Oh, uh, I see. You, <clears throat> you um remade your load order mm-hmm. and you added new mods, so I'm gonna. I, I I can't. I'm, I'm wor- what are words? I forgot what it is, is that you do with vortex. Uh oh, like the way it actually like like overlays the uh, the files or something. Yeah, hold on. I'm opening vortex so I can check because okay. this is bothering me I, <laughs> like, beyond reason. <coughs> Deploy. That's the word. Oh yes. Deploy okay. The load order. So we overwrote mm-hmm. a, all of the armors that I had fixed. I had fixed so many meshes. Like the the mod has fifty armors mm-hmm. and. That's a lot because you have to have a female and male variant of the body type and everything like that. So it was just an absolute nightmare. Yeah. Uh, to update. And it's not fun. I like creating new things. I don't want to sit here and fix old armors from seven years ago. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Any, anyway. You're, you're, you're on like a time crunch for that because you said you got to get it out by September. Just just go by US time. It's, it's almost 10 a.m. <laughs> uh in, in on the west coast right now just like if 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 it you know you if you if you churn it out uh you know a little bit into october your time just default to us time then <laughs> just like oh like oh. no you guys were wrong us there's, time there's no way there's yeah. there's no way i i have like three or four days of full of 12 hours of work on, to do on it to fix all my mistakes and add, add, add all the new stuff in and um so it's it's a nightmare but i will get it done because i i really want to get it done people deserve it i have learned so many new things and it just needs to be out there the mod is too popular to stay as bad as it is yeah well uh make make some like real quick uh like like halloween stuff like you know throw in a ghost costume or a skeleton costume mm-hmm. and then just like release it like a little bit closer to the end of october and call it the halloween update and then just throw in a whole bunch <laughs> of stuff like that <laughs> um yeah, that's not actually a bad idea i, I, I do that that's that's i'm thinking with portals now <laughs> um add even more stuff in there you go yeah i mean it's I, I, I it's the really obvious cool answer armors. huh yeah I have some really cool new armors that are like better quality than my previous stuff, so I'm really excited to get the update out. It's not just fixed old armors; it's also new stuff in there. Oh, there you go. Do you wanna? Do you wanna? Uh, you wanna? You wanna tease the audience a little bit here in this interview with like some of the some of the mm. new stuff you got coming out? <laughs> uh, so there's a there's a bunch of Brotherhood of Steel like scribe things. Mm. I I use some of the BOS stuff, and then there's some like hazmat suits, some new vault suit meshes like. Uh, where you have the general's jacket mm-hmm. and the vault suit under it, and then there's like a hazmat suit that has a resident, um, like a wastelander robe over it. Uh, lots of neat looking wastelandy stuff. Nice. Once more. Hell yeah! Everybody's going to be mm-hmm. super stoked for that because you're out. It just like outfit stuff in general. Everybody's super stoked for. Um, on that, uh, one of the things. Uh, let me see here. Where is it? There it is. One of the things that I wanted to uh, ask you specifically about um, is uh, 
you i mean you very very likely uh remember this um well obviously you remember it you made it um but your black lives matter mod uh the one you did mm-hmm. for fallout 4 um i can't remember when that was 2021 i think i um, think so yeah yeah so, something around that time um obviously 20, 2021 specifically was a very very strange year um but i remember i remember that that mod specifically obviously you know you put out the mod it's great your your outfit and 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 texture and like cloth related stuff because like flags too and stuff um always tremendously well done um that i don't i don't know if it was just like you know the buzz of like the media hive and stuff like that but obviously there was a lot of positive articles put out about it but i remember mm-hmm. seeing in like almost real time uh like the counter response to that because i think you put out that mod and then like almost immediately somebody put out like in all lives matter one um which if i remember correctly got taken down like real quickly um mm-hmm. but then somebody also made like a ghoul lives matter mod which i think was also up and i kind of liked because that was kind of funny it was like the in universe version of it mm-hmm. um what was what was like your perspective uh from that from that whole you know obviously you're the one who's in like the middle of all of it but like what mm-hmm. was all smacking my microphone um mm-hmm. what was your perspective uh during like just all that Mm, so I checked it's 2020 I was okay. like it has to be because the pandemic started t- uh, 2019 and that was like after that anyway yeah I couldn't remember if it started like at like it was like during the start of the pandemic or like a year later but either way um yeah like what was what was your perspective from the middle of that so <clears throat> I understand the people's frustrations of not being able to post what they want mm-hmm. but I thought it was <sighs> Like it's so much wasted energy to to do that and to try to troll me or try to troll Nexus. Um, if you are are you when you're uploading a mod, is the mod trying to make the world a better place place or is the mod trying to instigate hate or is the mod trying to um, <clears throat> diminish someone's human value or is the mod trying to troll someone? People are like, oh. Nexus only only panders to to woke agenda and whatever. But mm. the the thing with woke mods is that they are trying to improve the situation or raise awareness for some situation that needs fixing. Whereas these counter mods are trying to start a fight or they are trying to troll, and that's why they get t- taken down because they are hostile, not because because all lives don't matter or something i don't know i i find it extremely weird like it, if you're going to put up uh, upload a mod that creates hate or divisiveness then don't be surprised that it gets taken down where do you think you should be modding you should be take, making mods to make people's lives better mm-hmm. not to spread any kind of hate or instigate or, or troll i i just don't understand do you think that because you because you've also put out um you put out like a, a number of like diversity like pro diversity mods and stuff like that um mm-hmm. i i can't remember i can't remember which one what was what was the one you put out that had like the shark uh oh, yeah. and, and like the the nuke like the actual nuke that was like rainbow or whatever like what was that one called yeah. again the- that's the Pride 2023 mod. That's what it was. Okay, uh, yeah. But the last and this year has been extremely difficult for uh, trans people. Mm-hmm. And there's been an unprecedented... Unprecedented? unprecedented? Un- unprecedented. That, that's the word. Yeah. Uh, for, 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 for reference... Sorry, 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 hold on. For <laughs> I don't mean to cut you off. I just want to preface it. Like, yeah. I'm not correcting you. You are, I, you're, you just, English isn't your, isn't your second language. So I'm, I'm, I'm helping you along. I just wanted to, yeah. I just wanted to say, I'm not, I'm not trying to like talk over her or anything or insinuate anything. Like yeah. she, English isn't her first I language. Really I'm are. helping it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but yes, <laughs> unprecedented. Uh, and, and, yes. <laughs> Yeah, so there's been so much hate going on and especially targeting uh, 
trans and non-binary people and it, so i wanted to emphasize that on this year's pride mod and it has the no hate atom bomb statue it's like a it's a deactivated atom bomb that is painted in the pride colors and you can display it in your in your settlements and the shark it has slow uh, in recent years the uh, blow high mm. has become like um, a little mascot for for trans people mm. so that's that's the mod yeah um did i i can't remember if i made the comment or something but like are you gonna is there gonna be like a mod where you can just like use the shark as like a baseball bat and just beat people in the wasteland with the with the little shark <laughs> stuffed animal or is that like already in the mod and i'm just because oh no it's like you like it's a settlement item in in the mod that you put out like you can put it down yeah. like next to a bed or something yeah, I could I could make it. I I had plans of making them into melee weapons, like replace baseball bats or something. But I, uh, one thing is, I didn't want to um, put anything violent in the mod. That's I fair. wanted to be a, a positive positive representation thing. And then I also just lost my interest in working on that mod because it wasn't it it was an activism mod. It wasn't a mod that I like like want really wanted for my gameplay thing it was more of, more of a representation thing and i wanted it for those people for, uh, for whom it would mean more than me That's so fair. i sort of lost my drive drive with it it was a funny joke but it, it, it the the uh, the shark but it ran its course so. yeah that's those fair. are the two reasons why i didn't update it there yeah yeah i i don't know I, I just really like the it's like anything really like it'd be the shark it'd be like a teddy bear just anything that's like you know cute looking and you're just going around the wasteland just beating people to death with it i just think that's a really mm -hmm. funny juxtaposition as as it relates to anything um uh yeah, on you the, can use it in the junk junk jet you can, oh, you can yeah, oh my god <laughs> you can shoot them out of the junk jet <laughs> I didn't even think of that. That's even that's that's even more hilarious. <laughs> I have a short on my YouTube uh, where you can shout out to my YouTube where you uh, can see me shooting sharks with that. It's, oh my it's god! Pretty fun. I'll I'll probably have like an overlay video uh, uh over over this part of the uh, over this part of the interview showing like that exact video of you shooting shooting little little sharks at people. Nice. <laughs> the nice. junk jet. <laughs> junk jet shoots sharks. Oh, that's hilarious. I love that so much. <laughs> um, <laughs> but uh, to that, uh, both those points are kind of like that build, uh, like a build up here. Um, I put out a video uh, recently talking about uh, the Nexus um, banning like that mod that got rid of uh, the, the pronoun option uh, in Starfield. Um, yeah. That video blew up a lot more than I thought it would. Uh, I've, I've the last couple of videos I put, I've gotten like four or five hundred uh, views, something like that. Uh, mm. That one, re that one got like three and a half thousand views, which isn't isn't anything like brand new for my channel. I've had videos just go absolutely crazy, but it was yeah. interesting because obviously there was a lot of people uh, who were you know not making the most good faith arguments um but then there were people who had more of a concern with just like more so like the censorship from nexus because obviously you know like it's their platform they can do what they want um but then there's like oh people are saying like oh there's like you know th some of them were making bad faith like oh it's a um there's like hypocrisy and stuff because they allow like you know like you know mods with 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 unrealistically proportioned women in it uh or like mods that like for some reason the the let the mod in fallout 4 that lets you you know like control alt delete children was yeah. something that kept Breen brought up as an argument which yeah. to me was it, it, really it weird um but the it was interesting because there were some people that seemed to be making a good faith argument as to like the the leg maybe not legitimacy but like where that balance is between uh you know obviously like representation and stuff and uh freedom when it comes to uh you know being able to 
sort of like the libertarian understanding of like you can do whatever you want and whatever is popular is what's going to get big right a lot of people were saying like hey if this mod you know doesn't do very well it's just going to get buried in the sea of mods right if it does well hey that says more about the community than it does you know the next the platform or the or or the game itself or whatever where do you sort of see that um see that balance between uh diversity and representation and um uh 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 like like censorship like where where in the middle there um do we find common ground with those two uh those two points and what does that look like if that's not too big of a fucking question (laughs) (laughs) it's um it's really hard to draw the line but at the same time is the children mod targeting specific children or is it just all the children like is and it's not just what the mod does in the game it's how it shows to the people who are mar- uh, marginalized and uh, like and like and like uh I'm good at this English. How does it work? <laughs> it's like, is it is it is the mod being up causing some people to feel like they are being erased? Are our children gonna feel like they're being erased because the mod en- enables them to um, talk uh, to be to be shot? Mm-hmm. Or, um, so I think that's where it, I, need, I I draw the line because. Um, if someone sees the mod and is like, oh my god, this site is hosting a mod that lets you, that swaps out all black people. All black characters are changed into white characters. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's crazy. Uh, f- to me, that's crazy. I don't know how people who think that kind of mod is good think I can't get into their brain space. Mm-hmm. So I think it's it's not so much about, oh, you should have the freedom to do whatever you have in the game. It's Nexus's responsibility to not keep those kind of mods up, that people come up and they see it and they think, okay, well, I guess it's, it's fine to be anti-diversity. Mm-hmm. To be, like, discriminatory in, uh, in certain yeah. practices, yeah. Yeah. Um... Okay, now I have a cat standing next to me, yelling at me like, "Ah!" <laughs> Hi, mayhem. <coughs> Kids. Cats have a. Yeah. Cats on the stage. I know, right? So, so, so stuck up and full of themselves, thinking mm-hmm. they're they're so great. What do you think? You're so great just because you're cute? Nah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. Um, now we have a cat here. So anyway, that's like. It's it's not just about what you can do with your game. Like mm-hmm. I understand that pride flags annoy you in your game. I kind of feel like you should be able to have the freedom to remove them. Mm-hmm. But I don't think anyone should be obligated to host that shit. Yeah. Mayhem mayhem stop. It's a very serious subject. You can't eat paper while I'm talking. She <laughs> came here and tried to chew my planner. Um, <laughs> Anyway, I don't I don't think anyone is if you want to host that shit, go mm-hmm. somewhere where people host discriminatory shit. Mm-hmm. You don't have to start a culture war over it. It's yeah. pretty simple in my mind. But again, this is just my mind. Yeah. I don't I don't want to go to a website and see a mod that removes all women soldiers mm-hmm. because clearly women can't be soldiers. Oh no, it's, absolutely it's, not. It's not it's not a a queer or it, it's not just queer people it's not just black people it's not just women it's not just children is a little bit different mm-hmm. if there was a mod that made it so that you can't shoot men but you can shoot women yeah that'd be, kill, a little, that'd be a little weird <laughs> it would be weird yeah so um th- so that's how i see it like i don't want to go on the web- website and think okay well women can't be soldiers it's degrading one of the but at the same time i also kind of find that all those like atomic beauty and weird like sexualized mods i also mm-hmm. kind of find those weird but it's it's it's, it's, it's not... for kind of like a different reason right 
because yeah. me me personally, um, and maybe maybe part of the reason uh, the maybe part of the reason the video I uploaded got a bit more negative 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 energy towards it than I I think uh, it probably ought to have was because I didn't explain my 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 thought process very clearly, but me because yeah. like i'm i'm on the same page as you about like removing like lgbtq flags or like flags in general at that point it's like if you want to like change like you know a flag texture or something to where it's like oh it's like a pride flag and you just want to change it to like an american flag like that spider-man mod right um yeah it's like i think you should be able to do that it's a flag i don't really see the biggest problem um unless you're like changing it to like you know a, a, the the the, the the that german flag um because mm. i yeah no <laughs> that's a that's a whole different situation um yeah. but um me personally i see it like if it's removing something like if it's removing uh choice from the game i think that that more so is a problem just because especially in like an rpg game i don't think that a mod should be removing choice from a role-playing game because that's kind of the whole yeah. point of a role playing game is choice. That's why the pronoun mod specifically to me is so fucking stupid. Um right? Just don't use they them if it annoys you. Just right? you, use, you choose the body type and it gives you you choose the the male body figure yeah. and it gives you the male pronoun. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. <laughs> and it's it's not rocket science yeah like obviously you know like if you want to mod your own personal game like that like yeah sure whatever go ahead but then like i it it seems a little it seems a little self-entitled to all of a sudden think like oh people are making fun of me for this because i want to do this this way that's kind of fucked up and like no it's like you're doing fucked up shit like people are going to call you out for doing fucked up shit you know you can do whatever you want whatever right. you want you just got to be able to accept the consequences of what you right. what you do like I, I i can't tell you how many times like just working in general i'm just like, i'm just going to walk out of here and not come back if i yeah. i could do that i could do that legally but then i'm not yeah. going to have a job and any money and mm -hmm. the the relationships yeah. i built like that's all of a sudden going to go away and stuff like that so like there's consequences for decisions and if you can right. live with those consequences that's fine. If you can't handle them, exactly. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you are free to say whatever you, <laughs> you like, almost, Yeah. within the law. Yeah. But <clears throat> we are also free to tell you how fucking stupid you are for saying that. Exactly. It um, works both ways. No one, if you, if you, well, if it is not the consequences of my own actions. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Hot damn. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, yeah. I, I don't think the world's biggest modding website who embraces diversity uh, should be obligated to host hateful shit. Yeah. That's my opinion. If your mod is there to erase a group of marginalized, abused, discriminated people, mm -hmm. you don't upload it. It's not adding anything to your game. Yeah. It's your uh, you, you, if your mod is there to instigate, if your mod mod is there to like maliciously troll mm -hmm. someone or target someone, I, I don't care if it's a trans person or a YouTuber. I don't think anyone should upload a mod that makes fun of a YouTuber either. Yeah. it's not it's not a di necessarily a diversity uh, problem either. It's yeah. more of a don't post hateful shit. It's that simple. Yeah. Um. I, oh, I got my part of that. I have received some like weird comments on YouTube and they don't even, they, they, I don't even react to them. I'm just like hiding and moving on. It's not worth yeah. any of that. Yeah. Like I, someone, people are like calling, I work for Nexus and, and I'm, <laughs> I'm like the face of woke mods apparently. Apparently. So, yeah. It's because you put out like, more than one of them. So obviously. Mm. Plus, yeah. you're a woman, you know, so that kind of like just. Oh, they love it. <laughs> or hate it. Yeah. yeah. I, I do think I'll, that. A spoken woman who doesn't take shit from little shits, I guess. Right. I do think that um, there is. 
I do think that there is an argument towards like violence against children mods or mm-hmm. like mods that like portray women in a negative or unrealistic uh, uh, way. I think that there is an argument towards that. But as far as I've seen, that's not an argument that comes up unless it's being talked about something else. Um, yeah. Because it, it's just not a conversation people seem to be willing to find a solution to. They just want to yeah. bring it up for uh, to, as, as like a straw man argument against other things. It's, um, it's, it's the only argument they can put out mm-hmm. for, for their mm-hmm. supposed <laughs> case. Yeah. It's, no, the, the children mods... And the sex mods weren't a problem for anyone until they were started to be used as a defensive weapon against diversity mods. Yeah. Or anti-diversity mods. Yeah. And it's just, it's it's real weird the way some people's brains work. Um, <laughs> the mental juggle they do, I don't understand. Right. Um, on that, though, speaking of, speaking of uh, how brains work, um, obviously, you know, you've you've been a modder for a very long time. You've... Uh, you've created a whole bunch of mods yourself. Uh, you've seen a whole bunch of different mods. You've been involved in different modding projects. Um, you've you've worked with, uh, uh, I oh, well, gosh, what was it? Um, is it? It's probably overlaid right now. But that mod you worked on with uh, the Sim Settlements Two team uh with that uh mr handy trunks malfunction. that's what it was yeah, i could i knew it was trunks something i couldn't remember the other one but mm-hmm. um yeah so like that mod specifically uh you you know you worked with uh other big projects before um what what's like your you know just in in your entire time being a modder and being involved in other mod projects and modding the game yourself what have you found to be like your your favorite mod like what's the one you keep coming back to is like this is a linchpin of you know fallout 4 skyrim whatever whatever that that game is like what's your number one mod oh my goodness like f- something made by other people yeah like your favorite mod i mean it could be your mod it'd be <laughs> but like in general like of all the mods that you've interacted with what's your favorite one um interesting npcs probably for skyrim Mm. I, I can't play the game without that one. There's like this list is like twenty different mods. There's just way too many mods to choose one really big one. Yeah. Interesting NPCs for Skyrim and for Fallout by the same creator, Chris uh, Chris uh, Takahashi. Uh, the um, Tales from the Commonwealth, a si- similar kind of mod. It adds a lot of NPCs you can talk to. They can be companions and so on. Tell us the uh, the because you you because they're all they're all made by the same same person, right? So what's like the big uh, common trait between all of them that you find to be the most appealing or the most uh, uh, engaging or like what makes that mod, quote unquote, because it's all like, you know, the same basic thing, it sounds like. What makes it yeah. your favorite? The, it's I like witty, humorous characters and those mods are just shot full of them. I, I play these games mostly for the characters. The characters, their backgrounds, the conversations I have them, those are a really big thing, thing uh, a driving force for me in these games. Uh, be it, be it uh, Baldur's Gate 3, which I just discovered, or Dragon Age, it's the NPCs that I can interact with, do things for, uh, that are like the main thing for me. So those those mods have so many, as you say, interesting NPCs that you can just you can just walk into town and there's like the innkeeper who always repeats the same lines or has this dialogue with another innkeeper about the ale going bad. And then there's this guy who's just like, hey, can I be your follower? And then he has this whole life that you can discover and his background, things he has to say when you walk into places with him. He comments on the icicle on that statue's nose hanging from there and it, how it's like, it's not mm-hmm. like that's embarrassing. It's it's. <laughs> absolutely hilarious and amazing and it makes you more immersed in the world when there's npcs who feel like they should be there and they belong there kind of like a couple even of though the... they're pretty silly yeah kind of like a couple of the uh a couple of the named um uh companions you can get in in starfield for like your outpost or your ship or something mm. um uh god what's what's that one girl's name uh she's in the She's in the bar in um uh in 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 New Atlantis. Um 
Oh, I have it written down here, I think. Uh, Merica, that's it. Uh, Merica, that uh, that that dark haired girl in uh, in in the bar there. Um, she she's 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 got like a whole like backstory and stuff. But you can you can also just like hire her as uh, I think I think she's uh, weapons or something. Like she is, she's mm-hmm. good for your ship's weapon system or something like that. Um, but there's a couple of characters like that where they're actually like named crewmates, uh, and they got like yeah. a little bit of a backstory and stuff like that. Um, I think I, that, that point in Starfield, I really liked because as you, as you said, with, uh, with the interesting NPCs mods, um, it feels like just like that. Like it's an NPC, but like, you know, they have a name, they have a backstory, uh, they're, you know, some of them might be able to, you know, you might be able to make them into companions, but the, the fact, whether or not they're actually able to follow you on adventures doesn't really matter. The point is that they just seem like real people in this, you know, simulation that you're experiencing. Mm-hmm. And yeah, exactly. Yeah. And I, I think that's really cool. Um, so we are, we are in agreement there. Uh, the mm-hmm. interesting NPCs mods for Skyrim Fallout, and I would imagine there's going to be one for Fallout, uh, for, um, uh, for Starfield down the line. Uh, no. No? Chris Takahashi works for Bethesda now. Oh, so does he? Oh, well, his name is in the Starfield credits. Oh, he's probably the one that made them then. <laughs> like America <laughs> and stuff. Could be. It could be. Yeah. Um, well, maybe somebody will uh, somebody will step up and uh, and fill his shoes mm-hmm. in the modding sphere, as it were. Um, yeah, he's so talented. He's so incredible with his, his with his writing. It's, it's so wild. Yeah, he's it. So he's le- he's left some big shoes behind. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Um, on that though, that's actually a that's actually a pretty good segment into uh, into my next question here. Um, I don't know if you saw it or not, but. Um, when was it? Um, it was near the end of near the end of 2022, December 2022, if I remember correctly. Um, the YouTuber Juicehead, um, who's also a, a, a major uh, Bethesda content creator, um, yeah, he, he covers a couple of other things, like he's done a bunch of stuff for uh, Cyberpunk and stuff like that. But he, he's yeah. he's primarily like a news guy. Um, he put out a video talking about uh, a potential, the potential for a uh, a Bethesda mod marketplace, kind of similar to uh, to the Minecraft marketplace, where yeah. you can effectively pay real world dollars for um, uh, like different mods, very similar yeah. to the Creation Club, but if I understand correctly, the Creation Club. Uh, is more so like, um, cause it, you, you might be able to, to clarify some of these details, uh, cause yep. you have actually made stuff for the creation club. Uh, the creation club is Bethesda hiring specific modders to make specific kinds of mods. And then the difference with this Bethesda mod marketplace is it would literally just be the modders create their mods and then can put them up on the marketplace. Uh, and sell them for you know a, a a specific amount of money depending on probably probably Bethesda. Um, but what are you, what are your thoughts on that sort of concept? Um, obviously, so far anyway, nothing nothing like that has come out, and nothing like that has been like hinted at or anything. Um, it's just sort of been like something that's been talked about as like a hypothetical. But in that hypothetical, what are your thoughts on that? Like a Bethesda marketplace where modders can make mods and then host them on this platform and sell them for a specific amount of money so for example uh sim settlements 2 like the entirety of sim settlements 2 chapter 1 2 and 3 let's say that sells mm. for like 30 bucks or whatever um like that whole concept like what are what are your thoughts on that as a uh, as a modder so we we don't have any any information on those yet <clears throat> um the creation club we don't call them mods they are official content for the game i like sort of like mini dlc they're called creations mm. they're not mods because they go through the internal build process uh they are curated by bethesda so it goes through the whole shebang mm. they 
they process the assets, it the, the goes through uh, Vicious QA. They are they are just so good. The QA Nexus doing the Creation Club stuff, it, they are phenomenal. They find the weirdest stuff and they're ferocious. Uh, anyway, so that's a whole different thing. Like they are officially built and created by by Bethesda. Ooh. So kind of like they're kind of like they're basically canon in a sense, like canon light. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Canon. Yeah, canon light. So it's um, you pitch a project. You're like, I could do this kind of a house, and they're like, Yeah, do the house. We'll pay you, and that's it. And then you put out the house after it's done, and they they process it and they. Uh, they do the QA and localization and that sort of thing. So it's it's a huge project to get one simple creation out. Mm. It's like a mini DLC. Whereas, uh, I don't know. I I haven't seen this marketplace video. To be honest, I've not. I don't look at leaks or rumors or that sort of thing. I'm sort of highly cautious with that because. When there's leaks or rumors, you're going to build up expectations for something that's not going to be there. Mm -hmm. And then you're going to get a lot of angry, disappointed people when it's either not what they expected and wanted it to be, or it doesn't come out at all. Like, you are craving that power armor skin for Fallout 76 for three years, and they don't even put it out. But you saw it in the data mine, so you expected them to do that. Mm -hmm. That sort of thing. You just end up with disappointment and angry, angry fans. So I don't look at them. But the ideal situation is with if I compare... Um, creation club to steam work steam workshop what's the paid mods uh i believe i believe yeah. it's so the steam steam workshop that was, that was like a kind of a free-for-all like everyone would could, could put stuff out and they could price their things uh any way they wanted so that was that ended up with a lot of people who are just taking old mods and posting them now up for sale mm -hmm. or upgraded mods. Um, I don't think anything that was previously free should be put up for sale now. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't think little things, I don't think your load order should cost you a thousand dollars. So I don't think, I understand that Sim Settlements is a fuck ton of work, mm -hmm. but I don't think it, I, that's the one, one mod that I could pay like more for, I guess. But uh, if you're making just little things, I don't think they should cost like ten dollars for an armor. Oh no, yeah, obviously. Price. I think there would definitely so, have to be some sort of like internal like review thing that Bethesda has to do because one of the things that I I can't remember if he talked about it in the video, um, but it seems like one of the what like again because as you said this this is all kind of like speculation based on i think like one thing that at this point is like a year and a half old um yeah. and and nothing has been talked about it since um but i think the idea would be that uh it would make it easier for mods to be more accessible on like xbox specifically yeah um i guess i guess fallout 4 specifically is also on uh, PlayStation could so it could be released there, but it would make uh, those mods more accessible, like mods that are built on PC. Uh, it could potentially make them more accessible to console uh, players as well. That's probably where the where the price tag thing comes in, because as you said, uh, something like if it's if it's free on PC, like who's gonna pay for it? But then you have to consider like the the console side of it. They can't get those mods on their console. So Bethesda is going to do what any company is going to do, and they're going to take that and they're going to, you know, sell it and market it to like Xbox or, or PlayStation players, whatever platforms are avail it's available for, um, and you know, market it that way. Obviously, as you said, not everything should go through, um, and not everything is going to go through. Um, but like conceptually, it's an interesting thing to to think about. For me, it's like it a big thing. In one of these these mod shops should be curation. Mm -hmm. If you just let everyone in and everyone can post whatever, you're gonna end up with like a ton of mod theft, copyrighted assets. People are gonna take soundtracks from other other games and put them up. I already see it with like Starfield modding, mm -hmm. where we don't have concrete rules for that. Especially if you're trying to make money off of someone else's content, I think it's extremely shady and should be like heavily moderated. So it it would need to be a system where where Bethesda checks it and they they approve it, 
it has to go through some sort of an internal process that anyone can't just put up any shit and charge a fifty dollars for an apple that gets placed on a on a table in <clears throat> what's the giant for in I, I can't believe I forgot the the first inn in Riverwood for a oh, time. Oh gosh. Um I can't believe I forgot the name. Yeah, I'm, I'm blanking shit. on here. I, I, it's, I know the one you're talking about. It's the one with the yeah. guy and everybody puts the basket on his head and then just steals all his shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that one. is there anyway. Yeah. There was in, in the Western Workshop, uh, the paid mod, the first time he came out, mm-hmm. um, there was a mod that placed an apple in the game and the creator uh, was asking for like $90 or something. <laughs> so it, if it's if it's like Wild West of modding like that, then it's yeah. not gonna work. But if it's curated and and regulated in some way, and there's like a you can only charge this or that amount of it, no one's load order should call call uh, cost them a thousand dollars. It's not it's obscene. Like you should be it should be <clears throat> some sort of um, a quality check, and um, like it can't you can't charge thirty dollars for an armor set. Mm-hmm. Mm. But I don't know, like, armor sets cost seven, ten dollars in Fallout 76. Yeah, but... it, it, it could be a case of, like, like, I don't know, maybe, maybe, uh, maybe Bethesda is kind of trial running, like, what a, a paid marketplace would look like with Fallout mm. 76. But, like, as far as I, as far as I know, a lot of the stuff in Fallout 76 is, like, uh, from what I'm remembering, anyway, like new assets uh, are are semi frequent, but not incredibly frequent. A lot of the times, it's like skins, which are usually like two to five yeah. bucks or something like that, depending on the skin. Yeah, there. My my only uh, grudge with the uh, the Fallout uh, seventy six Atomic Shop is that they're quite pricey. Mm-hmm. Like considering the volume of what what they how much they must be selling all those skins. I don't think a a outfit that got converted from Fallout Four, like let's say Voltec Rep sales outfit, should yeah. be eight dollars because it's like eight hundred atoms or something. It should be one hundred and fifty. Yeah. So it's like you, you spend a dollar on a thing that already exists in the game. You just enable it and made it playable. But uh, the same thing if there's like a big shelter uh, that clearly took a lot of development time. Because I see it a little differently because I've seen how much development time uh, there's localizations there's like eight languages you have to uh, like there's a button that you press in a shelter you 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 have to translate that to like 12 languages or something mm-hmm. so in in the files i see where 15 dollars for a shelter comes from but i don't see where 800 uh, atoms eight dollars uh for a armor set come from especially when it's a lot of the stuff in our shop is really good quality mm-hmm. but I think for a giant company, they're a little bit overpriced. A lot yeah, of them. So a lot of them I would, if there was a great armor, I would play gladly pay three dollars for it. Uh, if there was a great house mod, I would. That's impossible because I would be too picky. But uh, yeah. <laughs> I, seven dollars. Let's say I'm going to be using this house for this fills all my de- demands and needs. Mm-hmm. I, I'm going to use this for five playthroughs. I can pay. Or if it's an amazing display museum for every item in the game. Like, let's say, what's the um, Legacy of Dragonborn? Oh. Easy $10. Because it's, it's it's an amazing amount of work. So yeah. I understand that. A basic house mod, 3 to $7. Is that too much? That sort of thing. Yeah, I get you. Okay. If, if I was selling houses, I would price them at like 2 or $3. Mm-hmm. They're a lot of work, but they're not, they don't add had enough uh, to the game yeah. to warrant that price tag. Sim yeah. settlements, dollars I can see it. It literally adds a new gameplay feature and changes the game in ways beyond anything that a little add-on mode for like a house or a armor does. Mm-hmm. So I can see the big price tag and the enorm- enormous amount of work that is. But for houses, I, I don't see them being valuable enough to be charged ten, fifteen dollars for. Yeah, it would definitely have to be something that, as you said, it has heavy curation and heavy moderation yeah. to uh, to actually Absolutely. get through. And it would it would definitely lead to uh, a lot of mods, like some of the ones that we already talked about, like the uh, the the uh, you know killing children mods or the the un unrealistically shaped women mods. 
uh, obviously those wouldn't get in there. But then there'd start be like mm. lines like, oh, what about uh, the uh, the CCB mods? You know, the the beautiful body mods. Uh, yeah. Like w- like it where you know a lot of a lot of a lot of questions start getting raised. Mm. Um, but I that's you know as you said, but this is a big company. That's if they're gonna do something like that. That's that's the onus is on them to figure it out. Um, yeah. But you specifically, um, as as I mentioned uh, earlier, uh, I was talking about that Polygon article that mentioned the cheese house that you made. Um, <laughs> but it was also specifically uh, talking about the work that you did for Starfield. Um, boy, I hope that motorcycle isn't isn't getting picked up in my in my microphone there. <laughs> I, cool. I didn't hear hear anything. Okay, cool. Um, anyway, as I said, um, uh, Starfield isn't the uh, uh, the first major game that you worked on. You also worked for uh, I, I I I can't remember off the top of my head. You either worked for or uh, had your own development studio for a while. I, I can't remember if it was like an indie development studio that you got hired onto or one that you started. Yeah. But you were like working on like a new game uh that that was that was in development uh for a while uh, can you can you yeah. tell us anything about anything about that yeah so it uh, it was an indie studio founded here in my my hometown uh i got asked on board very early they would just like the company had been started and i was i helped get uh, the game development started so i was one of the co-founders and what studio and... what studio was that uh forbidden studios forbidden studios mm-hmm. Uh, we we were working on Among the Trolls uh, for I think it was in de- development since 2020 to 2023. Um, it completely changed um, in the middle of production, so it was going to be a sim- uh, single player adventure survival game, mm-hmm. uh, heavily influenced by uh, Finnish and Nordic folklore. We had a lot of cool creatures, but the mm, publisher. Uh, suggested that we make it into a co-op so pretty much we had to start from scratch again to make yeah. it a co-op and that took a lot of like wasted development time and then um at the end of 2022 right before christmas um the project got put on hold indefinitely and everyone got had to be let go so that was dramatic mm. it was it it was really uh it's really bad. I haven't still recovered from that because uh, we were so heavily invested in the project. It was going to be so cool. Yeah. I think it went wrong in when we tried to had to start trying to make it into a co-op. It would have worked better as a single player game. It meant to the story meant to be a single player story. So that sort of never worked for us. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think. Uh... I think it uh, like that sh- that sort of shift specifically might have come just a little bit too early because if from what I'm remembering of um, uh, some of the stuff that you put out and some of the stuff that you talked about about that project, it kind of se- uh, n- specifically now that you mentioned like it was uh, it was shifted to be a co-op game, it kind of sounded like if it had come ha- come out or like started development after. Uh, uh, Oh shit, Valheim. Um, yeah. If it had come out after that, there probably would have been, would have been a little bit more faith in the project because, if I remember correctly, Valheim is a uh, uh, a co op game. Um, and yeah, it, it is. I yeah. think it's a four player co op. Okay, yeah, and it has a lot of uh, a lot of similar uh, similar aspects. Um, uh, yeah. You know, it's based on uh, Norse and. Uh, uh, uh Finnish mythology maybe maybe more so Norse mythology um but yeah. like you know that same basic region of the world and based off the of same uh core um you know identity and uh, and folklore and stuff like that um and it it seems as if if Valheim had come out first that project probably would have gotten uh, a little bit more you know you know wind in the sails to uh to to keep it going all the way to the end um but at least from uh, a lot of the screenshots that i saw much higher uh environmental um uh quality and uh and and uh uh detailing it was a very pretty yeah. looking game from what i saw mm-hmm. 
Yeah, it was uh, supposed to be like an ultra realistic. We started off with like uh, really, really high resolution textures and and uh, it was supposed to be ultra realistic, um, to really detailed, mm -hmm. very different in our style of art style from No Man's Sky or Valheim. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Very cool. Um, yeah, it was very cool. I yeah. wonder if the project will ever pick up because it is such a cool, cool concept. Is there anything you can tell us about, like the story, or is that still all all uh, all hush hush because the project's still, I guess, technically under development, but it's suspended mm -hmm. for uh, for now. Yeah, it's like we we don't know. None of us in who worked there, like, are just workers. No, mm -hmm. what's gonna happen? Um, it was um, the player character would discover their shamanic heritage. Their grandfather was a shaman in the in in Finland, mm -hmm. and they come and discover that the, the grandparents are gone. Something's happened. Uh, they start hearing this like feeling this calling to go back to their grandparents' place, and then you discover that the the forest is alive there's like so many creatures different kind of each like environment has its own protector guardian sort of thing that you have to have to deal with mm -hmm. in a way if you deal with with them like in a hostile way the the forest gonna uh, the forest is out to get you yeah and you have to you have to keep the forest happy we had lots of cool creatures in that and then you just go on this journey to like discover your powers and uh, what you can do and to figure out how to live in a respectable harmony with the, with the environment. It, it was also a little bit of a, like a wibbly wobbly timey wimey stuff. Yeah, <laughs> because uh, among the trolls means to be to be gone, to be lost, to be away from the world of humans, mm. to be be somewhere. So that was uh, a little bit in the story as well. A little bit of a, a environmentalism message in the uh, in the writing. It sounds like, yeah, a little bit. It's it, it was definitely like you lose your phone, you lose your mo modern backpack when you fall into the lake, and you mm -hmm. lose all your stuff, and then you end up in a grandparents' cabin who would live very, what's the word, modestly in mm -hmm. the woods, um with no modern comforts or anything like that so you'd have to pick up from that and it was a survival game so you would craft things you would harvest things but if you harvest too much you're not respecting the forest so you have to pay respects and offer something in return for taking all these mushrooms from the woods it's a uh, very cool we were figuring out the survival mechanism and a gameplay loop and it, it was all coming together but yeah that's sadly. that sounds like a really cool uh like a really cool game uh in in from what i'm remembering in recent years uh there's been a lot of games that have a very strong environmental message uh like i can't remember the name of it but there was this one game that i saw uh that was like oh like everything's like a wasteland and stuff and it's like a city builder but you're not building a city you're building an environment so you have to like repopulate different areas of the wasteland with like different seeds make sure there's water and stuff so that uh, a variety mm -hmm. of uh, of like trees grow and then uh, introduce like uh, uh, wildlife into it so there's got to be like prey predator uh, mm -hmm. scavengers stuff like that it was it was very it was very interesting because it was like a, I think it was described as like a reverse city builder you know kind of like if you started yeah. off in like mm -hmm. the environment to fall out for and then just like all right we're gonna build trees there we're gonna get fresh water there we're going to put some beavers over there. It's going to be fantastic. <laughs> the Eden Project. Right, yeah. Um, but yeah, uh, that's very cool. I like I like games like that, um, that. I hope it sees the light of day someday. I do too, because just based on what you... Uh, just based on what you described the story as and a little bit of the gameplay and thinking back on a lot of the visuals that I've seen from that game, uh, it seems like it would have been really cool um mm -hmm. but thankfully uh that wasn't the only big project that you got to work on um <laughs> because I don't, I don't know if anybody knows this um you were actually the person that invented starfield um <laughs> todd howard's just a just a shill trying to take all the credit from you you are the one that 
did all the lighting and all the all the clutter in uh, in Starfield. <laughs> literally, literally all of the lighting and and every piece of clutter is apparently placed by me. <laughs> every every single thing you see the sun. Guess who put it there? <laughs> Eleanor put the sun there. <laughs> um, so. Yeah, in 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 all seriousness, in all seriousness, you did uh, get a chance to work on uh, Starfield a bit. Um, what was like? Obviously, what you can actually talk about. What was mm -hmm. uh, what was all that like? What like what it? What were you assigned to do? And and how did it feel to work uh, to work for Bethesda? So I had experience of that a little bit before because I was on a creation club as a full-time contractor where I would like help other people's projects and to do some like final checks on environments and dungeons and help detail other creations. Mm -hmm. uh, I worked on other things than my like the own my own things that got put out. So I had the connection through there and then they needed more hands on deck for Starfield and they brought me on to that since I was already like sort of in the loop. But it was a whole different thing because it was like a full-time video game production and there was like so many staggering amount of people involved in that. Unlike the little teams that I worked with on Creation Club, it was it was incredible. Everyone there is so, so nice. They are so passionate. They are so involved. Like the biggest pet peeve I have when people are like, oh, Batista is so lazy, the developers are so lazy and they're making modders do all their work. Mm -hmm. like, are you a fucking idiot? Do you even know how hard the devs work? Do you even know how inspired they are and how much they care? You have no idea. Everyone there cares deeply. Mm -hmm. If there is if it's one thing they don't want to do is to put out shit. And they, if, the choices you see that the developers are made... Could it be that they know better than you? Like people are complaining about some things. Like maybe these things, these, these people, they make this stuff for a living. They yeah. get paid to do it. They've been doing it for 20, 30 years, some of them. Mm -hmm. maybe, they, maybe they just know better. Yeah. And this is what they wanted to make for their game. It's their vision, their creation, yeah. not yours. Because... You expected something. You d d dreamed up something that you wanted for this game. Yeah, because and, there, and you're not allowed to be like that disappointed. Because obviously, not... you know, like Bethesda is not out here trying to put out games that have like all these bugs and stuff. <laughs> but when you're dealing with it, this is something that I've 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 seen a lot of people maybe sort of not either not fully appreciate or not fully realize when talking about like Bethesda games, especially since Starfield came out and everybody's comparing it to like No Man's Sky. And like then people are comparing it to like PlayStation exclusive games like Spider Man or Horizon Zero Dawn, like 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 Spider Man or Horizon, for example. Like yes, they're very well made, very good looking mods, but what you can actually do in the games are pretty limited. And like you know, you can still do a lot in those games, but you can't do as much as you can do in like a Bethesda game, like. Bethesda is really good at making uh, big games that you can do a lot of stuff in. And when yeah. you're when you're accounting, like you can't account for everything that's gonna go wrong when you basically give the give the player infinite near infinite possibility, near infinite right. options. So it's like, are there gonna be bugs? Yeah. But you know, they're do you only not like the main quest. Yeah. change it you can take the creation kit and you can change it you don't like a specific thing in it you can just jump in and change it it's the the thing you get when you have this open an engine and you have the tools and the freedom to do whatever you want in in the engine and in the game and to the game and add anything mm -hmm. you can't do that with a lot of other games that you can get mods for yeah and so it's that's that's where you get and all games have bugs. I don't know why we we just don't treat Bethesda games that much differently. It's because like I've been playing I've been playing new games recent in recent years and they've all had bugs. It's because Weird Bethesda has it's because Bethesda has the funniest bugs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I haven't seen that many things in Starfield. Mostly sometimes I saw like NPCs floating inside ceilings. Yeah. Like there's that's, that's the only thing. There's there's still bugs in Starfield, but they're very minor bugs from from it what I've seen. It doesn't feel unpolished at all. Like there are other games like I felt like 
Redfall was a really good game, but it felt really unpolished. It felt like felt like it could have used another six months yeah. of uh, development time. Yeah. Um, but I I did two playthroughs, so I I like got my money's worth. So yeah. it's fine. There you go. But yeah. Anyway. Um. Yeah. So I saw the whole development process in in inside, uh, attempted meetings um that sort of thing. So that was a huge change from the creation club. Mm. And so what specific, like what we kind of, we kind of got off the, off the rails yeah, a little that, bit there. That, like what, what specifically yeah, did you do uh, when you were working on Starfield? Uh, so I did some lighting setups and the lighting is a lo lot more complicated this time around. There's a lot more elements and um, building blocks to it. Um, and in some areas, I'm not going to, say any specific places that I worked on and then um, the needed some people on the like interiors team where um, I would I would build small interiors and decorate them do all the set dressing all the lighting it started off as me just doing lighting for these places but then it, I got like hey, what you understand clutter well can you do these and then I d did those for the for the rest of my contract this was right before um, this was when they hadn't announced the delay yet mm -hmm. so shit was on fire mm -hmm. a little bit like everyone was uh, getting it ready for the original launch date so there was a lot of stuff that needed to be finished so i i got bounced into the team that i could put i could bring the most into because lighting was kind of slow for me i wasn't as great as it mm -hmm. uh, at it as i am with like small in, uh, like interiors building decorating creating spaces so that's where my strength was and i where i got moved after uh after a while makes sense that's where uh, your no, area I, that's where i you're... didn't make any of the cup copy cups no <laughs> uh, the copy cups were already there when i joined the game the only thing that i saw got finished while i was working was the big espresso machine oh yeah i remember when that was posted in uh, in the team chat and i was like oh that's so good yeah. i'm gonna add that everywhere was, and so I did. Was there like what's what's uh maybe maybe you can't uh you can't answer it because you just said that you you couldn't really go into any specifics. But like, what was your like favorite area to like add clutter to? If if you can if you can say that, I love cluttering up the spaceships. Mm -hmm. It's gonna be one of the first mods I do um, when I uh, when we get the uh, some sort of tools that I can edit the environments with. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna. Uh, make all the clutter in the spaceship static so that when you change hubs for your ship mm -hmm. the, the clutter won't disappear it's always going to be there nice that's probably what i'm going to do yeah cause... and then the player homes need a clutter touch too yeah because that was something i noticed like almost right away when i uh when i first started seeing a lot of the interiors in um in like the spaceships um i thought like wow like actual like in-game stuff um like a lot closer to the you know the actual release date i remember thinking like wow these like the interiors are really full like there's a lot of stuff inside these actual specific habs um and yeah i still think the uh the interior section of like before you actually get into the cockpit and stuff the interior section of um the uh, uh oh god what's what's the name of the 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 ship you get from barrett in starfield frontier yeah the frontier that's i knew it was something like that um mm -hmm. the, the the like the interior habitat there with like the uh uh the table the the sleeping area all the all the stuff like around it and everything it's just so like 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 warm and like lived in and very very yeah. comfortable it feels very comfortable yeah, all the interiors in this game are just phenomenal. There's so much, so much cool stuff. It's incredible how, and maybe I see it in a little bit different eyes, but all the lighting and everything, like the details are just, of course, I see it a bit differently, but yeah. just phenomenal. Fallout 4 already had incredible in the interiors. They look so good, but Starfield took it to a whole other level. It's very nice. It's, uh, it's, they, they, Bethesda just seems to keep elevating on, like, they have a very specific formula and they just seem to keep refining that formula over and over mm, and yeah. over with each game. Um, on that though, uh, Bethesda isn't the only, you know, the only, 
uh, side of our our little gaming coin here uh, that seems to keep improving because mods, the modding community also seems to keep improving. Uh, we talked a lot about oh, yeah. We talked a lot about Sim Settlements, uh, Sim Settlements Two, for example, um, which to to me is probably like the best mod that we've seen come out of. Well, I'm gonna take that back. Uh, it's one of the best Fallout mods that we've seen put out in recent years. Um, I, I was gonna say the best mod in general, but I remembered the. Um, Oh god, what's that uh what was the name of that Skyrim mod uh that eventually became like its own game, The Forgotten City? Was it was it also The Forgotten yeah. City? Okay, yeah. Um Yeah. I, I I played the uh uh the Steam version of The Forgotten City, not the Skyrim version, mm -hmm. but the actual like standalone uh independent one. Um and if the writing in that game was even like half as good as it was in the uh in the Skyrim mod, oh boy. Cause like that, that was a really well done game, and I yeah. I can I can imagine that the actual mod itself would be just like phenomenal, like a standout in the uh, in the Skyrim modding community. Um, but in that concept, um, mods have just gotten like better and better and better as time goes on. Uh, we see it with you know bigger projects like uh, Sim Settlements Two, uh, um, the Forgotten City. Uh, a, a lot of the clothing and design mods. We talked a little bit about some of the uh, some of the some of the mods that like the more the more uh, risque, like not appropriate mm -hmm. for school mods, like not safe for work mm -hmm. mods. Um, even those like are like the detail on them is just starting to get like wild, like the outfits and stuff, right? Um, yeah, incredibly, incredibly well made. Um, of like you know the recent projects, um, how do you see like the bar being like raised? Like what maybe maybe in like your opinion, like what mods have like raised the bar as far as like you know the standards of the modding community? Like how have we gotten better? Like which projects have elevated the community? There are so, like Skyrim itself is living its like. Um golden age of modding right now with like there's so many animation mods coming out like the whole system where it makes skyrim play a li little bit more like souls games mm -hmm. and stuff like that it's just incredible there's so many like um, script extender based mods that completely change things the uis have become incredible in the way they can be overhauled i can't remember any names from the top of my head right now and then like incredibly detailed high quality high resolution armors have come out like there is so much stuff for skyrim now fallout 4 is lagging a little bit behind it it's a uh, different people who make this stuff mm -hmm. but F fallout 4 also has like transfer settlement blueprints you got sim settlements mm, there are some like major major gameplay overhauls for fallout 2 and it's just phenomenal i'm sorry i don't know if you can hear him back in the background when i'm talking about like a little bit but it's not it's not too bad um i was also yeah. going to say that uh fallout is also also has a lot of, i mean i mean i guess technically uh skyrim uh the skyrim modding i guess the elder scrolls modding community also has that because uh uh the elder scrolls modding community has sky oblivion that i think is coming out yeah. next year um and then uh fallout the fallout community has there's a there's a there's well obviously there's a bunch of mods that are being worked on right now for um fallout uh fallout new vegas um yeah. but then there's also like i think one of them is like a remake of fallout one or fallout two i can't remember but there's really yeah there, there's there's like i think three different mods uh mod projects to 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 remake fallout two specifically uh, one I think is in New Vegas's engine, and the other is in uh, Fallout 4's engine. Um, it could be Fallout One. I can't remember specifically, but like people are trying to bring back the older games. Um, but then they're yeah. also making brand new stuff, like Sim Settlements Three, like uh, Fallout London, uh, Cascadia, um, Empire Wastes. Uh, stuff like there, there's just a bunch of mod projects. Uh, oh, and uh, specifically uh, the Capital Wasteland project. Um, which yeah. is remaking Fallout 3 and Fallout 4's mod. So, like, they're both, 
like I said, the 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 bar is just being raised higher and higher and higher, and both <laughs> are kind of going through this like big, massive, major development. Uh, where they're just constantly putting out new stuff. It sounds like what you're saying, though, is Skyrim is more uh, consistent in putting out new stuff like almost every day or every week. Yeah, it is. And for Fallout 4, I've, I'll, I'll get excited about these projects when they're out. Mm -hmm. Like I know how, how gigantic they are and how much work there is, so... Um, I've I've stayed away from them because I want to work on things that come out in the next seven months, not in the next seven years. Yeah. But for both Fallout and Skyrim have stuff like like um, that completely changed the way the modding works. There's the Rob Go Patcher for uh, is there's a similar thing for Skyrim maybe like the Rob Go Patcher is. Uh, groundbreaking. Then there's sim settlements. There are all kinds of equipment and crafting overhauls. There's um, incredible stuff like that. There's like the favorites menu EX. I'm looking at the most popular mods and those mods for in the past year for Fallout 4, and there's just some absolutely mind blowing stuff. Mm -hmm. And similar stuff is uh, done for Skyrim as well. Yeah, it's completely. I I don't understand how they can do this to attend. 10 15 year old game engine it's just insane i know right it's like it 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 constantly blows me away how uh how creative and how some and how dedicated some of these people are um mm -hmm. but then like i i just thought uh or maybe not thought but i i was having a conversation with somebody and we got into a little bit of uh grand theft auto uh grand theft auto 5 and I'm, and it like hit me like a bag of rocks like this month September 15th, uh, uh, um, uh, Grand Theft Auto 5 is officially 10 years old, <laughs> which is just like, that's, that's mind blowing to me. Uh, and the game is still as popular as it's ever been. And like, oh, right. Like there's still new stuff coming out for the game. And it's like, like that stuff by Rockstar and Bethesda, like, they're still doing that. Skyrim has been out for over, you know, over over a decade at this point, like 12 years. Uh, New Vegas as well, Fallout 3, like, it's, it, and, and that's just, like, stuff since, like, Fallout 3. There's also, like, Morrowind and Oblivion and stuff, like, people are still modding for that. And it's, like, like, the, the, these people are, like, and, I mean, you know, like, modders are just, like, on a next level. You know, it's 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 truly amazing. A lot of it is because um, some of these people who made mods for Fallout 4 and now Starfield have been there for so long. The modding community is kind of it still has the same people. Mm -hmm. We've been doing this for 10 years. There's been so many cool tools released. So many best practices have been discovered. There's so many people making tutorials. There's just so many like resources people there's there's so many resources there's so many people who are like essential uh, pillars in the community who are still there like the the guy who works on nifscope is now doing nifscope for starfield the script extender team is here already working we had starfield script script extender for like on day three since the game came out or something mm -hmm. it's, it's the, the people who've been making all these like incredible uh, upgrades to Skyrim and Fallout 4 in the past years are now on Starfield. So stuff that took eight, seven years to come out for Star, uh, Skyrim is now coming out in seven days. Yeah. Starfield, because the <laughs> community knows how to do this stuff. These All these things have been uh, maturing for the past 10 years and now people know how to do it. They know how stuff works. The, all these new NG things have been discovered and people can date it do it in days instead of years mm -hmm. and that's one of the big reasons that the modding community has grown together for the past 10 years and the people are still here new people are coming in and they are met with with veterans who know this stuff and share this stuff and make tutorials and do wiki pages and it's incredible it's so easy to jump on board because oh, the, the groundwork is there uh-huh and it, it helps that uh it helps that bethesda has constantly made their stuff uh better and easier to work with uh one of the one of the one of the past guests that i had on the uh 
on the on the show uh uh Ropuket uh Ropi Ropi Quit I never I just call him Ropi I don't know how to say his full name mm-hmm. properly um but he uh he's he's the same thing uh he started out as a modder uh he was making uh uh mod he he I think he's still working on uh a mod uh for Fallout uh Fallout Coos Bay uh which takes place in uh Coos Bay uh Oregon here on the west coast of the United States um yeah. and he is uh you know he's a he's a he's a member of but he like he works he was one of those modders that got hired for Bethesda and um yeah he he's he was in the same boat like you know he's he's a modder and he got really good at his craft and then there's like this div- like a divergence you either become a uh you either become a modder like in you become one of these veteran modders right mm. um who just continuously offers uh better experience uh for the modding community or you become a fallout dev um <laughs> or you become both uh and one of the things that he said was with because I think he did some modding for Fallout 3 or New Vegas, I can't remember. But specifically, he said that when he jumped over to uh, modding for Fallout 4, it was, like, so much easier to use. Like, you could place down, like, tiles of landscape now. uh, Mm -hmm. And, like, you could... What was it? Like, buildings? Like, you you didn't have to, like, build the entire building. There was, like, levels that you could put in or something like that. Um, and he said that it was just like so much easier to mod for Fallout 4 compared to like 3 or New Vegas or something. Yeah. Um, and like, I, I just think that I can't wait for like, you know, like five, 10 years from now. Um, when, you know, like Elder Scrolls 6 and Fallout 5 and like, you know, Starfield mm-hmm. 2 have come out and stuff like that. Just like it, it, it's literally like it's going to be like paint, especially with like advances in technology and stuff like AI and like, generated uh uh you know landscapes and 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 buildings and stuff like that is going to be so what like oh god what was that um uh what was that game maker back in like 2012 that everybody was like making just like all these like pixel sprite horror games and stuff in yeah i don't know that one yeah i i can't remember the name of it off the top of my head there's probably some some name or some some video plane uh that shows it right now but um yeah like i remember like that came out and like it like it one it was easier to use because it was a lot simpler technology but like everybody just start pumping out like all these games and stuff for it um or like a lot of the like unreal uh tools that they have now right it's super easy to make stuff in unreal and it seems like we're going to get to the point in like five ten years or something like that where it's just going to be so incredibly easy to make uh to like mod stuff for games that we're just going to be seeing we're not going to be seeing just like you know like small mods like oh here's like a new outfit or a new weapon or like you know a new location or stuff like that we're probably going to be seeing a lot of uh a lot of mega mods you know like like uh like Fallout, uh, uh, Sim Settlements Two, like Fallout London, uh, stuff like that. Like every you know month, every year, something like that. They're going to come out at such blazing speed. It's going to be like getting a new DLC or like almost a new <laughs> game, like every month. <laughs> and it's yeah, going to be wild. It's going to yeah, be. It, it's it's so exciting. Sounds kind of scary. <laughs> a little That's bit, really yeah. Scary. Because like there are also some mods where it's like, uh, I don't know about that chief. Uh, like like the <laughs> frontier, for example. There's a, there's a problem where like, um, how do you stand out in all that? Like if you're looking at Starfield modding now, mm-hmm. there's hundreds of mods coming out every week. But are they all good mods? Yeah. Like half of them are half of them are console commands or like bat files mm-hmm. uh, that just run. So if if there's going to be so much, how do you find good mods in that all that fluff? Like the things you actually want to install, because all those console commands and bat files are going to be forgotten mm-hmm. once once the creation kit comes out and uh, Starfield extender mods, script extender mods are already making some of these console commands. Well, how about uh, how about how about how about we do this? As somebody with um, 
uh, with w- you. Yeah, because you you pre-ordered uh, you pre-ordered Starfield. So somebody with over a decade of modding experience, uh, a veteran as yourself, um, what sort of advice would you give to uh, to new modders um, so that they can stand out like that? You know, because as you said, um, it, it if or as technology continues to advance and as Bethesda continues to offer. Uh, you know, more and more advanced uh, ways to mod their games. The onus kind of falls on the person modding to be able to be creative enough or uh, intuitive enough or uh, industrial or industrious enough to make something that's going to stand out. But obviously that's a, that's a, uh, that's a learned skill. Um, So what would you as a, um, as a veteran modder, uh, what sort of advice would you offer to to newer people, new modders, new new players, um, to create something that will stand out? Um, you can do what I did and just put out so much stuff that people can't ignore you. <laughs> or uh, I would say make those connections. Be it's a lot like in the job market. You have to have the right connections. You have to uh, have a uh, a presence like the, one of the main reasons I'm so well known is because I'm on Twitter and uh, I stream and I have a big Discord server. So I I, I ju- suggest not starting your own Discord server because every modder now has a Discord server and I'm not going to go on 500 different Discord servers. I don't. I, there is a Starfield mod in Discord. You can be active there. Make those connections. Get to know those people. Um, present your work well. Like. Maybe post on the forums that you're working on it. Get people hyped for it already before you put it out and present it well. It's you have to be incredibly lucky if you present your mod badly and uh, to get noticed. Some of these files that you just put out a file and you get lucky because you posted it at the right time or you're doing something that no one else yet did. And now is a good time to get like your to make a good mod that people need for. Us. Starfield, if it's just like console commands or bat files or something. But present it well, make those connections, get people excited. I know it's if you want to be well known, you ha- it takes a, li- a little bit more effort and it's going to take more than just one mod. Your first mod is probably, if it's un- unless it's totally groundbreaking and something never seen before, then it's going to take a few more mods to, to get established in the community. If your first mod doesn't get super popular, you shouldn't get discouraged. Uh, my first house mod is absolutely horrible. I've taken it down from Nexus. I've, I've taken down all my first mods. None of my earliest work is even in any, in Nexus anymore. I don't like them. So sometimes it's, it's going to take a while. Unless you get really lucky and suddenly somehow your mod goes viral. How long do it's you think? It's a good idea to make YouTube content, TikTok, that sort of thing. But that comes down to do you want to be popular or do you just want to make a really good mod that people need? Because if you don't care about all the all, all the fame and, and fortune, then just put out the mod that you want and present it well. And if it's, if it's good, people are going to find it. People are going to lift you up if it's something that the community craves. How long do you think it's going to... How long do you think it's going to take for the uh, for the more pronouns mod to come out for Starfield? Um, I would say if the creation the, Todd said they are thinking of bringing in the mod tools next year, sometime in the spring, I think. So after that, when it comes out, um, a few months. You think it's it gonna takes t- a long time? A few months for a for a more pronouns mod. Pronounced or pronouns? Pronouns. Mm-hmm pronouns oh. like he he her she the, i was making a i was making a stupid joke because <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's uh, the whole issue I with starfield they, i think they're gonna gonna get tired of it fairly quickly because it's not going anywhere God, it's already dying so. down the whole well, it's so stupid yeah mm. yeah i think people are gonna still try every day for the next couple of weeks and then it's gonna die down right so the the creation kit for um starfield is coming out probably some uh, time in the early early year, next year, and then it's going to take 
depending on what it is, it's going to take people a few weeks to a few months to make really big stuff, depending on how much time they have to put out in their projects. Mm-hmm. A lot of people are already making plans. They're designing their overhauls and such things that they have like the groundwork laid down when the creation kit hits. And a lot of mods will start coming out when we have the X edit. So you can actually create and edit ESPs. That's going to be a huge thing. I don't know how long it's going to take from the X edit team. I haven't been following because a big problem with the, the, the discords for different modders is that all this discussion is not, no longer in Nexus forums. It's in a huge modding discord and every mod author or tool creator has their own discord. So you'd have to be part of every one of those and follow that. So I, I don't know where projects are at the moment. That's true. What um, What's like when you can actually get in uh with the tools and stuff uh to starfield um because obviously you said that uh um you said that like cluttering up the ships and stuff uh in in starfield is going to be like one of your one of your big projects but like do you have any other uh like ideas or projects planned for uh for starfield that you're at this point just like mapping out uh so yeah i have some i'm gonna do some player housing i'm gonna do some spaceship like hubs uh, so people have more options to decorate their ship interiors if they want to live actually live in their ships mm-hmm. uh do something with the storage and also add more stuff to the outpost building because right now what if you want to do like storage in outposts um you have option of these yellow crates or a black crate and that's about it like oh, yeah. i want to i want i'm building a house not an not an outpost on a distant moon. Yeah. So I want I want dresses. I, this is where I store my armors. This is where I store my ammo. This is where I store my food. I don't want a, a blue uh, cooler. I want an actual functional fridge. Well, not functional, but you know that it looks like a fridge full of yeah. stuff. Yeah. So I want different storage options for the for the outpost building. So when I build my ho- home in Aquila, I can actually have like a dresser and a wardrobe and a desk where I can store pens or whatever I want to store in the desk, yeah. right. that kind of thing. Yeah. What's a- Also, uh... I need to fix the coffee. What's it? Fix the coffee. Oh yeah. <laughs> there is a, there is a, in Paradiso, there is a coffee shop that is not Terra Brew. Mm. And they claim that they are build, uh, growing coffee from re- the way it was done in Earth right. back in the day. Yeah. And then you go and buy coffee from that guy. I think it's called Lux Coffee or something. Mm-hmm. And he's selling you Terra Brew. Oh. <laughs> I mean, this is, this is not going to fly. Just, you need better coffee. Right. I want to grow coffee in my outpost. Look I out. want to make different kinds of coffee drinks. Look out so for Ellie's the... coffee mod for Starfield. Right. I was just about to say, look out for, look out for Ellie's coffee mod in Starfield coming uh sometime in 2024 2024. yeah yeah exactly you heard it here first guys right there it is that's that's what two two mods now uh at least coffee mod and then the what was it the housing overhaul yeah well okay i guess three so that and then the uh the one the one we joked about at the beginning the was it cheese cheese house armor yeah, uh, uh, grilled cheese house armor yeah in starfield the the (laughs) spacesuit Oh, that's going to be amazing. That's going to be. I hope. I hope uh, tools come out before April, so I can actually release that as an April Fool's mod. Ah, oh, that'd be so amazing. <laughs> All I need is Outfit Studio and X Edit. I don't even need a NIF scope. I don't even need the creation kit for that. Because my first armor mods were made for Fallout Four before the official creation kit came out. Right. That's going to be fantastic. Twenty twenty four is going to so be a cool. wild year. <laughs> <laughs> it is. Um, Everyone's gonna jump on board. It's gonna be great. We right. see so many people coming over. Power of Three, Studio, people who have been making incredible stuff for uh, Skyrim are now modding for uh, Star Appeals. So it's going to be the best time. Are there any uh, any any words of wisdom uh, you wanna you wanna pass on to the audience here? Be excellent to each other. Like, don't be a hateful shit. Be nice. We all want to enjoy these games. Enjoy the games the way you want them to enjoy, but make it in a way that you're not discriminating anyone or you're not hurting anyone's feelings. No kink shaming, nothing of that sort. Let people, we all love these games. We all want to enjoy these games. 
the community is amazing. Let's keep it that way. Thank you for listening to my conversation with Eleonora, one of the most well-known and celebrated Skyrim and Fallout 4 modders on the Nexus Mod website. As always, if you enjoyed this episode of The Atom Cast, the best way you can show your support is by subscribing to our Patreon, as your monthly contributions will go towards improving the quality of transmission, as well as helping to decrease the time between uploads. Until next time, I thank you so much for listening, and I will see you all out there in the wasteland.